Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a real pleasure to welcome you in a new uh, 5G Zorro Tech Talk. Uh, welcome again, and uh, it's a real pleasure even for the speakers and distinguished speakers that we have uh, today, uh, talking about uh, even for the solutions and proposal by 5G Zorro uh, today. Um, we uh, have a moderator coming from a very giant of a telco, Telefonica, e Diego Lopez is uh, with us, and uh, we will present uh, these speakers uh, very soon. Now we will have even institutional and commercial uh, video that we show mainly with the, the aim of showing how much uh, the topic is not just a topic of research and uh, standardization, but is a top of the industrial strategy agenda of several players in the uh, telecommunication world. Among these players, there are also partner of 5G Zoro uh, project uh, as Atos and Intracom, who are working on this issue and uh, to make the best proposal. So we will show in a very few seconds now the Atos video. Technology will transform how we work and live now and beyond. Your customers demand everything in real time, but is your technology foundation ready to deliver? In the world of now, you must meet the demand for new services, turn data into value, create new revenue streams, and be agile enough to meet customer expectations. Your success depends on your network, your performance, and most of all, on the customer experience you deliver. By partnering with Atos, you can compete effectively with omnichannel customer experience and engagement deliver value with analytics and real-time data-driven intelligence, virtualize your network for the flexibility and agility to develop, deploy, and scale new services, accelerate your journey to a modern platform, drive effective IT transformation at reduced cost, empower your employees to work securely, enable secure, cost-effective solutions with hybrid cloud and edge computing. Our services are enabled by a world-class partner network and deep experience with a wide range of leading telecom companies. We also offer an unmatched commitment to sustainability, including one-of-a-kind decarbonization services. If you are ready to work with a partner who can prepare you to face the world of now and translate your vision into a business reality, talk to an Atos expert today. Learn more at atos.net slash telecommunications. Diego Lopez, coming from Telefonica. Bienvenido. Hey, hello, Andrea. Thank you. You are, you are the master of commander here today. <laughs> I'll do my best. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I left uh, the torch to you because uh, you have a lot of speakers today, very distinguished speakers coming from uh, Greece, Italy, and soon from Israel, right? Yeah. That's uh, that's uh, precisely the idea. The, uh, the the point is that uh, well, uh, we we are going to uh, as is, uh, has been announced to talk about. How, uh, I take uh, I take note that uh, when I pass to you the torch now for the moderation, you have more than six hundred people viewing the tech talk. Yes, so, so you we, have a giant responsibility to maintain these kind of numbers. No pressure, no pressure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, please, and, and uh, we, sh we share with Alexandros and Mercedes and Gino one point, smiling, smiling, please, and give enthusiasm to the technological view and position. Okay. So your time That's and it. enjoy the tech talk. Okay. Thank you, Andrea. As I was, uh, I was saying when, uh, when Andrea remi reminded me of uh, of the uh, huge responsibility. Uh, well, the the idea is basically to start talking about uh, AA uh, uh, and ML and how they can be applied in in a, in a field that is not the same, uh, I would say, as the as the previous uh, applications of of these technologies. Networks are are highly dynamic and, and by definition non-linear systems, and, and there are. A, number of challenges uh, regarding this application and the idea is precisely to, to have uh, to have these uh, four experts here today to talk about these challenges and how they can be addressed from different uh, points of view um I, I, as andrea said that, that we have a 
plenty of people here with many important things to do. I will just uh, start introducing them. The idea is that they will make first uh, a brief uh, statement of their views on their, on their, what they are uh, uh, most uh, focused in, the, in their activity. And then we will open a, <clears throat> a session for, for uh, questions and, uh, for, from the audience or, or, or from some mothers that are of special uh, relevance. We will uh, start with uh, Mixiadis Filippo, who is a senior standards and research engineer at Intel Germany and currently is working as, uh, well, is leading the AI ML uh, work in, within the EU 6G flagship project XX. So, Milto, whenever you want, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, Diego. First of all, happy new year to everybody. And uh, I'm really delighted to be part of this panel discussion and uh, representing also the HexaX uh, 6G flagship project of the EU. Um, uh, I think we can even uh, uh, project the slides anytime, uh, giving a very brief introduction before going into the, uh, more specifically into the topic of AI ML or AI driven communication and computation co-design as it is the official title of the work package that I have the honor to lead uh, uh, for, for Hexa X. Um, uh, just a, a little bit of a quick background on the project before we get into specifics on the technical enablers. Um, uh, the uh, EU uh, flagship, 6G flagship project, HexaX, uh, got started uh, its implementation in January 2021, so it's been a little bit more than a year. And uh, uh, the aim is to uh, provide a first uh, set of technological enablers for beyond 5G and 6G communications, bringing together or interconnecting uh, the digital world, the human world and the physical world. We uh, all know that there is currently a lot of technical progress and developments and work ongoing, for example, on the topic of digital twins and how they can be designed and how they can be exploited for taking different decisions uh, across the network. So um, uh, the, uh, there is a number of uh, uh, basic or fundamental research challenges that we are tackling in the project, uh, namely trustworthiness, connecting intelligence, and this is what the, uh, this tech talk is about, uh, network of networks, so how we can have different smaller networks being part of, a, of an overall uh, uh, overarching network, uh, sustainability, uh, uh, meaning energy efficiency, but uh, also cost and implementation, effectiveness and efficiency, global service coverage, we need coverage for all, is one of the main messages uh, the project aims to bring. Extreme experience, because the, uh, we need to, uh, uh, to, to further improve performance uh, regarding a number of uh, key indicators and also trustworthiness. Trustworthiness is a, is a very important pillar. We're talking about security, privacy and trust. And uh, yeah, I think with that, I think uh, we can move on with the next slide. And right here, you can see a very quick overview of technical enablers that the uh, work package that the, uh, I'm uh, leading, focusing on AI and machine learning technologies and communications has to do with. There are two main research areas, as you can see on the left hand side, the AI driven, uh, AI -driven air interface. So, how can we exploit data-centric techniques in order to design uh, certain functionalities uh, for the air interface and beyond 5G and 6G communications? So uh, AI-driven transmitters, AI-driven receivers, um, novel data-driven transceiver design approaches, and also AI-driven radio interface functionality involving a constellation of topics uh, sp spanning from resource allocation to, uh, to interference manager on the top. You can see a number of identified requirements. So KPIs, they, there are the usual suspects as we uh, got used to them in the preceding wireless communication generation. So throughput and latency and uh, bandwidth efficiency, also energy efficiency. But there are also some new key performance indicators, uh, which are more machine learning related, such as convergence, flexibility, the quality of data. Uh, the complexity gain of a certain solution and also the mobility support and maybe others. KVIs, this is a, a, a new uh, uh, term that was coined by the project in order to refer to uh, so-called key value indicators, or in other words, soft goals uh, that uh, need to be taken into account when designing a network and uh, uh, 
uh, indicatively I would refer to generalizability of the machine learning solution. So what is the generalization capability? And this is important when we deal with uh, uh, wireless conditions, which are very fast varying and uh, high mobility scenarios, deployment flexibility, service availability. What is the availability of an AI deployed AI agent and its reliability in issuing high performance uh, inferencing decisions uh, in an energy efficient manner and also taking into account the time of the decision that is taken. This is important for uh, AI based network operation. Now moving to the to the other side, uh, the second research area is a uh, I like calling it communications for better AI. So uh, how we can think of different in network learning methods and algorithms and how we can holistically design uh, and allocate uh, uh, jointly the communication and computational available resources in the network and going beyond uh, the, uh, uh, the approach that was uh, followed by, by today where the communication and the computation uh, domains were, let's say, siloed or quite independent from each other, which is not the case. Uh, further, we're working on enablers for in-network uh, AI security, privacy and trust and AI-powered AI network operation, as we'll see. Very soon, there is a number of KPIs and KVIs. Uh, indicatively, I would refer to explainability or the right to explain for uh, the human users uh, that maintain a network on what is the root cause of certain decisions that are taken uh, as a matter of uh, utilizing the output of, uh, uh, of machine learning algorithms. And going to the to the next slide. Here, uh, we see a little bit more uh, involved overview of uh, what the aim of one of the major tasks of uh, this work package of HexaX has to do, so AI-driven area interface design. I would not steal too much of, uh, of the time. I would just refer to the bottom-up approach that we are following, starting from 6G use cases, KPIs and KVIs. And I would kindly like to point out to the uh, project's website. There is a uh, quite considerable number of deliverables that have been already published. And uh, uh, among them, the one that focuses on use cases uh, and, and performance requirements and also KVIs. So you see different functionalities of the area interface for uh, design and optimization. So beamforming design using uh, data centric techniques, channel estimation, coding and decoding, hardware impairment compensation, because we're talking about uh, uh, nonlinear phenomena, which can be hardly modeled or when modeled, the modeling approach may not be the one that we wish for. And then we go up uh, utilizing novel architectures and uh, further enablers, uh, dealing with interference management, mobility management, and new technology. So apart from the typical cellular architectures, as we know them, we're talking about cell-free, uh, reconfigurable intelligent surfaces, and device-to-device -device architectures. Going to the next slide to round this off. So uh, here is the, uh, the opposite view or the, uh, the one that has to do with uh, in-network learning methods and algorithms. Again, we follow a bottom-up approach. As you can see at the very bottom, we have a, a steered focus towards uh, sustainability, uh, uh, dealing with uh, or introducing a number of technological enablers. So uh, uh, under the overarching topic of holistic communication or computation uh, co-design, uh, uh, there are certain topics dealing with uh, semantics and goal-oriented communications, going post-Shannon in that case, learning in the cloud, or, uh, inferencing at the edge, uh, model convergence and multi-agent consensus. This is very important because we, uh, we imagine uh, a network uh, involving a, a vast number of AI agents and many others. And then we go up, uh, security by design needs to be provided. There is a number of uh, enablers that we have already identified with respect to security, privacy, trustworthiness, meaning ex explainability of uh, AI-based decisions. And then uh, we bring everything upwards uh, and uh, the uh, aim is to uh, propose solutions for AI-based network management and orchestration. I think this, this may be quite relevant to uh, the scope of 5G Zora project, along with machine learning for network security enhancement, where the AI functionality is either uh, the functionality that needs to be protected or it's part of the solution or it may be part of the problem. So going to the next slide, I would like to thank you uh, for giving me some airtime to, to share the Hexa X uh, 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 latest developments and the focus of the project on uh, AI-driven communication and computation co-design. Thank you. Back to you, you Diego. Unmute. 
I noticed I'm muted. I was muted. I was uh, trying to spare you the uh, the noise of the um, somebody that is taking care of the of the garden here in the neighborhood. Um, so well, thank you, and it's a, it's a good vision of precisely the challenge uh, the challenges ahead, the beyond five G issues and. Uh, and the, well, and, and in general, practical uh, practical challenges and approaches. We'll move on and uh, to uh, our next speaker is uh, Nurit uh, Sprecher, who's uh, head of management virtualization and application en enablement standardization at uh, Nokia. Uh, uh, apart from what, for, from this position, she's a, she's an Etsy fellow, and she's currently the, uh, the one of the vice chairs of the Etsy ZSM. Uh, uh, Industrial uh, Specification Group. So, Norit, in, uh, just to, to, to be brief, uh, uh, let's go for it. The floor Thank is you yours. But, uh, can you share the slides? Who is going to share the slides that I sent? Okay, very good. So, what I would like to talk to you about today is the AI-empowered network automation and autonomy, and I will not take it for granted that everyone understands the needs to have a automation and AI empowered one in the network and service uh, management. So can we move to the next slide a little bit just about the, the challenges that we still have is that first of all, uh, network, networks are very hard AI problems, right? Uh, uh, they are distributed, they are dynamic, they are homogeneous, they are encrypted, they, uh, there is a complexity in the data set, uh, the data are characterized by high dimensional space, uh, the network data is heterogeneous and diverse and uh, the access to the data is a little bit uh, difficult we need to label and uh, what is very clear that their technologies uh, are and will become a more integral part of a uh, service and network management but the question is how to operationalize the AI techniques into the automation and management framework and functions and uh, if you think about AI uh, technologies uh, integration today it's still very much manually intensive and case tailored and we have very little automation, really portability and reusability of the AI uh, models and the AI uh, techniques. And uh, we also face with advanced integration and embedding capabilities that is needed uh, to maximize the use and the efficiency of the AI and how we can enable multi-vendor cross use cases, cross domain interoperable, unified and consistent uh, AI. So if we go to the next slide, and of course there are a lot of challenges, how to increase the confidence, how to, uh, to enable some uh, uh, incremental uh, migration with uh, human and AI interaction, uh, how to support all this AI diversity, etc. But if we, we look a little bit into the, uh, of, I'm not sure that at least I cannot see everything. Can everyone see the whole slide? Uh, at least to me, the bottom is hidden. Uh, if we look a little bit about the evolution of a uh, of AI in a network and service automation, we start with something which today is very much raw AI and very much uh, automated uh, operations. At the end of the day, what we want to do is really to, to move to something which is more intuitive and autonomous. If we look at the, the AI and the data, we have very limited view and use of AI potential, and we are handling with big damp data today and, and we need definitely and i cannot read all the details because i have to be sharp here but we definitely want to get into a, a situation that, uh, that the data that we are dealing with is the data that is needed to make this uh, ai uh, uh, intelligence and decision and uh, we have some mechanism to have uh, some intelligent data collection that we can impact what kind of data can uh, be brought uh, Today, the, the, the AI is very much use case driven, uh, very isolated, small scale solutions, and with very limited uh, uh, reuse. And what we want to get into something which is more AI as a service with full scale uh, deployment uh, and applicability of uh, enabled plug and play solutions. Uh, from practice, uh, performance and integration, today it's very much manually in intensive, as I said, and we want to get to something which is much designed with AI uh, inherently. Uh, we today have a situation that uh, that uh, the level of uh, confidence is a little bit uh, uh, very still limited, I would say, and there is no AI-specific security measures, and we want to get into towards measure autonomy and uh, that uh, AI continuously will deliver uh, on the business uh, targets and that we have some guaranteed uh, um, AI function safety, and I think the last one is about standards. Today, we have a limited set of standards that support that multi-vendor environment and the, and the, 
and uh, in the future we would like to have a comprehensive set of uh, standards that enable the AI uh, integration and uh, that uh, we can have share, share even uh, best practices. And that these enablers will also support, of course, different deployment uh, diversity. So, and the final and the final and the ultimate goal is, of course, to get something more intuitive, more autonomous operations, zero touch AI operations, machine reasoning, symbiotic human AI interaction with machine autonomy, transparent, trusted, open AI, reliable, robust, etc. And we have a long way to go in order to achieve that. So, if you can go to the next slide. Um, and if we look today also about AI, AI can happen everything and everywhere, right? And there is a big hype about AI, of course, uh, but we need to be very, very careful. It can be deployed everywhere from, if we look at the different dimensions, from, from the very, very edge to the very, very uh, uh, center and the, to, the, to, the, to the cloud, etc. And it can be in the different planes in the network uh, fabric. It can be in the control plane and the the domain specific management and then to end at the business level and the question is uh, how we ensure uh, that uh, and it is uh, where to deploy the AI is of course uh, um, it, it's a trade-off of capabilities where you want to make something closer to the to to the to the action or if you have a, want to have a broader scope of optimization if you distribute it more you need to create more interaction between the AI models or uh, and uh, you need to ensure that there's consistent uh, operation overall, uh, et cetera. So we need to really think about this. And in order to make it uh, happen, this consistency and this interaction or whatever, it's very, very important to enable standards that can uh, uh, allow it and to ensure harmonization across the industry organization. So if we can move to the next slide. Uh, a little bit about the landscape uh, from that mm. perspective. So if we talk just on the management and automation, network and service management and automation, so we can in a high level say that in the radio domain, we have the C5, we have the O1 that is handling that. Uh, in, the, in the transport, we have the ITF. In the, in the core, we have the C5. And then to end, we have the ZSM solution. And we have Team Forum, and we have the C5, and we have GSMA that provides the template uh, definition, etc. And ZSM provides the framework for everything. And the system also provides the end-to-end -end, uh, perspective, but also core key automation technologies. Uh, and they define, for example, all the AI enablers, if you go to the next slide, that, uh, that in my opinion, should be leveraged across the industry to ensure that we can appropriately interact with the, with the, the AI that is enabled by the different organizations and uh, do it consistently. If you can move to the next slide, please. Uh, so if we go to to the, to the enablers, so uh, these are the enablers that we need uh, uh, to support in standardization. First of all, to support uh, to be able to express the requirements from the execution uh, perspective. I'll try to be short here uh, to look a little bit about the data to ensure that we have access to the right data, training and inference data at the right place at the right time. Uh, how we handle a situation where we face with lack of proper uh, data. Uh, how to handle the data workflow, how to have the richer description and the expressiveness of the data, how to handle this data tsunami that we have today with some intelligent data collector uh, collection, how to handle the data patterns that uh, are dynamic and change uh, over the time uh, limited uh, validity of uh, the learn model, the limited generalization of the inference long knowledge, etc. How to govern the data. So a lot of challenges that we need to enable in standardization. And if you look at below, there's the inter-AI, how to interact between the AI models, how to allow them to support each other, uh, to provide the solution, how to transfer in, uh, knowledge between them, uh, how to handle this distribution, how to coordinate the, 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 the actions the, or the decisions that they are taking. And again, the action itself, how to express the action, who are the consumer of the action? Is it a human? Is it a machine? Um, and how to express the action, how to reason that, etc. So all of these are things that are subject to standardization. And if you go to the next slide, you can see that the uh, Etsy ZSM is actually working on uh, this artificial intelligence network and service automation enablers. And the idea is really to define something uh, that it's, it's ongoing work that will be leveraged across the industry in order to ensure that we can have consistent and coherent uh, automation end-to-end. Uh, -end. If you can go to the, to the next slide. Um, 
Yeah, so just uh, to highlight that end-to-end -end automation is a big deal, right? It's not uh, just additional enablers, right? And uh, it represents the industry's next year journey. And the use of AI ML will evolve incrementally, and we need to learn from real deployments and to feed it back into the standardization work. And the uh, intent-driven uh, network and service automation will be key element to provide a zero-touch uh, uh, problem experience and simplify the automation by hiding all the complexity of the federated uh, networks. And we need to have experimental and uh, show cost, showcasing of such solutions in order to learn from them. So if we go to the epilogue slide, because they want to be short. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so end-to-end -end, uh, zero touch network and service automation becomes an urgent necessity to unlock agile and rapid service delivery in open disaggregated cloud native networks. And the ZSM framework provides means to integrate AI-based functionalities, enabling operational autonomy and alignment and leverage of synergies across the industry is essential to ensure cross use cases, cross domain, cross planning, top of a unified and consistent AI-based operation. Yeah, that's my stick. Very good, uh, uh, Nurit, thank you so much. Um, as you can see, there is uh, ongoing work, uh, not only in research, it's, uh, it's a matter of standardization. That is an is a, is a, uh, interesting pattern right now in the industry that we are researching and trying to standardize at the same time. We are, we are trying to become uh, more or less adapted to, the, uh, to these interesting new times. Uh, before I introduce Gino, just a, a note, I forgot to, to explicitly mention at the beginning, if you have any comments, any question that you want to be addressed during at the, at the end of the talks, please use the, uh, the chat window. We, uh, I, I, I will try to, to bring your comment or your, or your, or your question for the, uh, for the uh, later discussion. Okay, and then we, uh, let's say, let, let's move home. And let's go to the uh, to the five uh, resolutions. And our next speaker is uh, Gino Carroso, who's the uh, who's working with networks and is the uh, technical manager of the five Zero project. Gino, please. Thank you, thank you very much, Diego, and thank you also for the for to Nurit and uh, Miltos before who introduced well actually the the landscape where we are moving. Five G Zoro as a project is uh, trying to move the first steps in this uh, direction in these topics. And uh, what I like to highlight in my short speech is exactly a few of the solutions that uh, we are working on. Uh, to tackle the problem of uh, optimization and uh, prediction in networks which are distributed and multi-operators. Uh, can we see the slides? I will be... Okay. So the 5G Zoro, for those who don't know, uh, is uh, a system uh, and a platform in the end um, which uh, is composed of various subsystems. Uh, we bring everything uh, and we start from a marketplace, a 5G marketplace where we can uh, di digitally and in a distributed way purchase different types of resources uh, ranging from uh, the infrastructure resources to the services, the slices, and that's actually the 5G marketplace box on the top uh, left of this picture, which uh, uses a, a private uh, permission DLT network to implement the transactions. And and this is uh, working with a number of other subsystems. The two highlighted in red are the ones which uh, actually use AI for different type of uh, activities. One is uh, IOPS, uh, which I'll briefly introduce later on, it, granted that it is actually uh, quite uh, known um, acronym. And the other one at the bottom uh, part of the picture is the zero touch uh, orchestration, where we use the prediction in order to optimize uh, the services and the uh, expected, uh, let's say, performances of these services. I'll show you briefly why. The overall concept of this high level view is that we intend for the IOPS part, try to tackle the problem of combining big data um, information coming from the different sources of a network. You see here different uh, uh, operators pushing data as data providers into a centralized, logically centralized data lake. Uh, the possibility to combine this data in order to automate some IT operations related to 
uh, rescheduling of services, uh, moving services in other places, uh, moving traffic loads, uh, optimizing resources, uh, reacting or anticipating uh, breaches in SLAs. This is part of a cross-domain type of services, the ones which are depicted in the, in the middle of the picture. And then they generate some triggers for reaction and adaptation into the other operator or the same operator uh, who's the data provider and is the one which will benefit of the optimization. In this landscape, there are three main functionalities of our architecture, which are um, highlighted with colors here. One is SRSD, uh, the other one is ISBP, and the other one is ISSM. These uh, cryptic acronyms uh, will be briefly explained uh, later on, just to showcase some essential features they they uh, operate. It's important, however, to say that in order to mangle the entire uh, complexity of this data, to allow different per, different views of this data per slice, per user, per operator, actually all of that. Uh, better, we think, uh, for our basically experience that uh, can best fit into the concept of operational data lake platforms, which are actually very big data stores where the different data can be accessed, pushed uh, in the proper, uh, secure and trusted way in order to, uh, let's say, um, um, provide the different views, provide the, the, the volume of information which is needed to the AI um, uh, engines and to the algorithms to take the decisions to predict what we want uh, them to predict, to federate, to uh, join different type of uh, um, uh, inputs from different sources and so on and so forth. So just to highlight on a first solution that uh, we are uh, working on and is part of our releases, uh, this solution is called the Smart Resource and Service Discovery module. It's the red module in the middle of the picture and its aim is to receive some intents for product request here a product is the uh, intention to purchase a network service or a 5g private network or even some spectrum access and so on and so forth this module srsd computes a subset of the offers which are available in the catalog of the marketplace that best match the intent and in order to do that it requires to be smart so to apply some let's say uh, uh, ML, ML uh, algorithms uh, to, to derive the best match, which is not only a simple query uh, on, on, a, on a database. And then based on multiple criteria like uh, location, price, service, resource types, uh, etc., can return a list of uh, product offers, which are exactly the ones that then can be selected by the other solution which is uh, the solution number two, which is called Intelligence Slice and Service Management Module, which implements through a workflow management, the business workflow, which is required to put down across different operators, the ones which are depicted here as CSP A and CSP B at the bottom of the picture, the different chunks of the service elements of the resources, which are part of the product offering and the product purchasing activity. The approach we follow and the architecture we uh, try to implement uh, is uh, following a, a design approach which we call a la ZSM, in the sense that actually it is uh, distributed with the domain actions and the interdomain actions, uh, different scopes for these activities. As you see here, there are three elements, different layers. And there are obviously also um, the related uh, mechanisms for uh, communications between the interdomain and the intradomain, which uh, rely on the communication fabric concept, which is also another key concept of the uh, of the ZSM architecture. Um, a component which reuses AI and in particular ML algorithms within the stage of the lifecycle deployment. Uh, for uh, this intelligent service and service management uh, stage uh, is the ISSM O, the optimizer. So it is actually actually the module which, uh, given the uh, selected uh, list of uh, prioritized uh, product offers, uh, is able to implement a cost-efficient decision 
with trust and security in order to deploy and propose for deployment uh, and so the instantiation, the final instantiation in the network, propose just the, the resources and the services which are best fit this, uh, these targets. And so here, really, we need to know what has been done before. We really need to know and uh, make the most out of the behaviors of this network. And here again comes in the ML approach and the AI engine that we need to, to use. And uh, a final hint on another stage of uh, a service lifecycle uh, process, which is the stage of the uh, breach prediction for SLA. So the networks are uh, the networks we know, we, we rely on simply because actually they are reliable. And because uh, they are reliable, because simply they have SLAs, SLAs in terms of performances, which have specific metrics. And uh, when applying these metrics to, uh, to the monitoring and the optimization platforms, we actually have to look into them and to build models uh, which uh, collate different inputs in terms of monitoring. And this is actually what the, uh, the platform is doing through the communication of various systems. You see the different blocks uh, with tag one, three, four at the different ends, which then go into the module number two, which is the SLA monitoring and breach prediction module, which takes all this data, computes the SLA, analyzes the trend and consequently takes actions for the SLA management in order to guarantee that the committed KPIs can be respected and as such takes actions, re preventive actions in order to, let's say, resolve potential uh, imminent uh, breach conditions for either availability or uh, uh, latency or the SLA which is put under monitoring. So in the end of the day, uh, we are at the first stages. Uh, we are a research project. We are at the first stages of this uh, production. Uh, these are three solutions which match this, uh, this uh, overall uh, ecosystem of the AI ML and for sure are setting a sort of seeds for whatever it will be further enlarged uh, on uh, the 6G uh, research and uh, deployment, mostly uh, thanks to the let's say, um, expansion at scale of the entire footprint of these uh, problems and the data they have to mangle. And so with that, I guess, actually, uh, I'd like to, to leave the floor to the next speaker and to the discussion later on. Well, according to the uh, to the plans, uh, now uh, 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 it was supposed to we, we will have a, a, an introductory video to uh, to Fiji Soro, but I don't know if it is going to play. That, that's uh, the problem of uh, of going live, you know. <laughs> and uh, well, any.
Okay, so I, I think that after this uh, nice intro, well, fast introduction to, to what uh, Fedis or attempts, we can move on and, and go for our fourth speaker, who is uh, Alexandros Kaloxilos, who is the executive director for the 5G Smart Networks and Service, uh, Services Industry Association, that is uh, for short is 6GIA, and, and, and uh, which is curious because it's about 6G and uh, it reverses the other of AI. <laughs> so, it's, uh, <laughs> and, uh, well, uh, uh, Alex has been working as well as the uh, as the uh, technical board chair for the uh, for the 5G uh, PPP. That is precisely the uh, industrial organization that predates uh, 6G IA. So, well, Alex, when you see fit, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, um, Diego. So, uh, and I would like also to thank the, the previous uh, speakers because they have nicely set uh, the, to today's topic, which is essentially that 5G and 6G networks are quite advanced networks and they have to deal with a lot of complex things. And AI and machine learning is indeed one of the key enablers for these networks. Um, what I would like to briefly present is uh, what is uh, the work that has been done in the context of the 5G public-private partnership uh, and the new program that is uh, very recently uh, launched, the Smart Networks and Services Joint Undertaking. So uh, we have seen uh, some very nice uh, solutions and uh, examples, uh, for example, from Gino and uh, Miltos. But I have to say that uh, last May, uh, we have released uh, uh, in the 5G PPP uh, program, uh, a white paper called AI and Machine Learning Enablers for Beyond 5G Networks, where we have included the work from 18 different projects. And uh, in this white paper where you can find the source, and uh, I'm quite confident that you will have the slides after the today's event, uh, in the information that we have included, we have uh, the different methods, the different use cases from network planning, network diagnostics, and uh, how AI can help uh, in providing insights about the different network uh, and services uh, that are executed. And network devices and control all over the domains, from uh, the RAM to the transport to the core, etc. So it is essentially, as Bert said, AI, it is expected to be in all the domains. Uh, the white paper includes information about architectural aspects because somehow the support to the AI has to take place uh, in the network. So we need to see some further advancements. And indeed, there has been some work, or a lot of work, I have to say, in the def different standardization bodies about the introduction of uh, uh, AI and machine learning, uh, different management models, uh, the trustability, which is a very important topic, and the KPI validation and troubleshooting of the systems. Now, in the white paper, there are there is a list of recommendations, which I think is uh, quite useful about how to proceed with the standardization of interfaces to, to handle, to access and handle and process the, the data, the needed uh, data. Uh, the number of the trials that are needed to identify opportunities for the different uh, customer segments. Also, to try to find ways uh, so that the AI solutions will be trustable from the operators so that we can reach fully autonomous operation of uh, AI-enabled uh, networks. And another recommendation that uh, I think is very, very important is somehow to manage to have an open repository for network data sets. And these data sets will be used as uh, for training and also for benchmarking of the algorithms. And people that are working in this area, they know that, I mean, uh, the results of the AI uh, solutions are very much uh, related to the quality of the data that uh, they are using. So 5G PPP is still quite active and alive because we have something like 30 projects. This was uh, a white paper that is already available since last May and contains a lot of information about the activity of this project. But then we can move on to the smart networks and services joint undertaking. So the road towards the 6G networks has started. It has started on the 17th of uh, December 2021, very, very recently. You can find a lot of information about the new work program. Uh, the new call will be uh, announced very soon in January. So stay tuned about this. And from the beginning, from the design of uh, this uh, proposal that became an actual partnership uh, that will last until 2030, 
uh, one of the key enablers that has been identified is data analytics, the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning as a key enabler for 6G uh, networks. So by design of the proposal and now the JEU, you will see that uh, several activities uh, in relation to AI and machine learning is, are present. Now, some very few words about the structure of the work program of the SNS. Uh, there are currently, for the first phase, two paths, an evolutionary and a revolutionary. So evolutionary, we are studying, or the plan is to study, or the project that will be selected will study, uh, how 5G advanced and the next releases uh, can be further evolved and improved in order to achieve KPIs and KVIs, as Mr. was saying uh, in his first presentation. Uh, on the path to 6G networks. Uh, there are large scale trials as well. And at the same time, we have a revolutionary path where the most promising technologies for 6G will be investigated in detail and the results will be included uh, in uh, future experimental infrastructures. Um, in all these topics, and uh, please note that the information about the work program is publicly available already, so you can follow the link and uh, see all this information. AI and machine learning is present in all the streams. For example, in stream A, in the evolutionary path, there are topics related to green radio technology, how to improve the radio access network, how to provide solutions about ubiquitous radio access. If you have uh, heterogeneous radio access technologies and uh, how to select the best one. In uh, stream B, which is the revolutionary topic, uh, there are uh, suggestions to use AI and machine learning for the further evolution of the system architecture in all the domains, from the core to the transport and the run, and how these are combined together in the further evolution of uh, 6G run, the wireless communication technologies and the signal processing to be used, wireless edge caching and AI, spectrum refarming and uh, reutilization, and even the integration of non-terrestrial networks and how services can be provided using AI and machine learning. Now, in Stream C and Stream D, large scale trials and the platforms, the advanced 6G platforms that are to be built during the first phase of the SMS work program, uh, they should be able to natively support solutions for AI and machine learning. So that's quite a challenge. Uh, I would like to close because I think that uh, we are coming to the end of uh, uh, this uh, today's event. Uh, please book this date in your calendars if you are interested in participating, uh, submitting proposals, uh, project proposals for the SMS. On the 27th of January from 9 to 12 CET time, there's going to be a public information day and we can uh, discuss more about uh, these points. And if you have any questions about, especially about the smart networks and services and the topics uh, indicated there, do not hesitate to. Uh, contact us using this email address. So thank you very much for your attention. Diego. Still, I think that you are muted. Uh, I was, I was muted again. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. As I said, is the uh, the uh, danger of uh, of live events. Uh, thank you so much. I uh, we don't have that much time as uh, as usually happens in these uh, in these uh, kind of uh, situations. I, I guess that the information that you have shared is, is quite interesting and, and, and it's uh, it has a value. And before we we close, just not to uh, <clears throat> uh, to to uh, uh, require too much time from our. Uh, Audience, I, I just wanted to to, uh, to ask you, you three, the, the three of you that are left, because uh, Miltos uh, told me that he had to uh, to leave uh, earlier. Is uh, is about one of the things that I have noted that uh, in all cases were mentioned is precisely the diversity of the different uh, uh, num uh, sources of, of of data and uh, application environments in which in a in a network we can consider the different network segments, the different goals for network management or for life cycle management, for optimization planning, et cetera. And uh, I would like to, to, to see with, uh, that you share any reflection on the heterogeneity itself and the nature of this heterogeneity. Um, apart from this being a, a real challenge for the application, how you see or which are the, uh, uh, the levers that we could uh, have for dealing with this. So I don't know, 
the, shall we go in the same order you, you were speaking? So we start with you, uh, Nurit. Maybe let's give the others first a start. Okay, so <laughs> Gino, Alex, whoever. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just uh, one very uh, telegraphic comment on that. Indeed, heterogeneity is uh, one of the key uh, topics here, uh, coupled with how we can really make use of these uh, machine learning algorithms that we have plenty now. And one of the problems we are facing in our project, but in all the different projects where uh, we are being involved in trying to apply AI ML to the networks is which type of metrics we really have to take into account to build our model, to take our prediction decisions, to optimize, et cetera, et cetera. And that's exactly, and this exactly points to the heterogeneity because what could be better to be checked uh, uh, with respect to uh, monitoring data from one operator for multiple operators or even logs or even reactions from the users. You know, there are, plenty of different and very orthogonal uh, type of potential data that you can put into the data lake. And for this very reason, in fact, 5G Zora was moving its steps in, in the data lake uh, technology. But still, I have to admit, the problem is not fully resolved. So it's a matter of research because the amount of data we can really mangle is really big. It's very, very diverse. And uh, the problem, if you want to get also uh, a level of uh, exponential complexity, when you move from outside one single domain and you start thinking about multiple cooperative domains, ZSM way, inter and intra domain way. But when these domains uh, correspond to operators, then a number of other challenges emerge. And here, heterogeneity again became become a, a really let's say critical point to address so indeed we tried to address some of these elements bringing together different type of data from different sources but yet the choices are very wide and this influence a lot the model and its performances we need more research on that definitely okay uh, Diego yeah uh... I think that uh, uh, indeed Gino has um, explained this quite nicely. I would only add that in terms of a single operator, I think that we are uh, these days in a good uh, point because uh, there are uh, interfaces and functionalities. For example, in CGPP, there is the network data analytic function. So there is a plethora of data that can be collected and processed. And uh, we have the interfaces also to create some feedback to, to control mechanisms like policy related functions. Um, still, I think that uh, this can be further uh, extended using information related to services. So services that are not network services are closely related to, to the applications themselves. Indeed, it, uh, the data space will grow exponentially, as Gino said. Also, it's going to be quite challenging to combine information between multiple operators. Uh, this is an open point for further investigation, and this is one of the things that we have to study for the next years. We are not yet in the position, that's just my personal opinion, we are not yet in a position uh, that we have fully mastered the AI and machine learning. I think that we are in the beginning, but uh, step by step, we are getting there. Yeah, but even if uh, we talk about a single operator, it's still a challenge, also from a research perspective, right? You have different domains, yeah. <laughs> you have the run, you have the transport, you have the core, you have the application level, you have the, the management plan, you have the control plan, you have the data fabric, even we are talking about now in the radio, acts, in the radio interface, uh, and each of them is different kind of data, okay, so the progenies is very, very high, right? And um, and how to handle all this, uh, as we said, how to ensure that we have intelligent way to to indicate what kind of data we need and that we get only the right data and we don't need to handle this uh, tsunami and how we handle all this workflow of the data, how we govern the data, how we express that. A lot of challenges. And if even if you think of been, even about a single domain, that there is no need for coordination, still there are a lot of use cases it, the whole AI is driven by specific use cases. So for each use case, you need the, the AI techniques and the AI models that you have uh, uh, to support that and how this work together and how this coordinated, etc. So I believe that networks are hard problems and uh, we have a lot of way uh, yet to go. Uh, and 
step by step we will evolve until we will get it all uh, supporting the, the ultimate goal of autonomous an autonomous city okay so if I, if I, if you let me to conclude uh, there it seems that we have a uh, lots of fun ahead when we're thinking about Indeed. this so well uh let, let's go for it just uh, thank you to you all again it has been a, a pleasure to have you here uh, i i hope that the audience has enjoyed uh, uh your talks and the discussion as much as i have done uh well just to uh to, to thank all of all, all of you who have been with us uh, during this uh, almost one hour and uh, just to, to uh, before uh, closing just to let you know that there is a third video if you in case you're, you are interested in about the uh, the the, uh, the application and results uh, uh, around these uh, these technologies in networking thank you so much thank you bye thank you, thank you.